This came in from a gal named Summer Dawn on YouTube, or she, I don't know if that's her real name, but that's what she says, Summer Dawn, beautiful name if it is, on meds now, but they really don't help. Shots help the pain, but they don't fix the issue. Sat, uh, frowny face, the pain is horrible. Yes, it is, Summer Dawn. Um, a nerve pain is not something I would wish on my worst enemy. And I mean, the truth is I don't have any enemies. <laughs> Hopefully, I certainly I certainly would aspire not to. Um, by the way, it's a Jewish uh, High Holy Day, the day of Yom Kippur, where we ask for forgiveness. So if you are my enemy, A, I didn't know. So that's a problem in and of itself probably. But B, I'm sorry. I, may, I want to make my atonement and uh, ask you to forgive me. Uh, just as we want our Lord to forgive us, we want to forgive each other and move on. So enough distraction. Uh, but anyway, I wouldn't wish this pain on my worst enemy who doesn't exist. So it's, uh, it's just nasty because it's pain in a nerve root. It's pain that's coming from the nervous system. Bega genic, the suffix genic means originated in, in Latin. So we call it neurogenic, originates in the nerve. And neurogenic pain is just the worst. It's just so severe. It's toothache pain. It's um, it's uh, childbirth pain. It's it's uh, trigeminal. It's just nasty, nasty pain. And I'm so sorry that it's happening to you because uh, not only is it really bad pain, it lasts. It just won't go away. The stuff's got duration. And uh, it's important to understand a few things. And this question brings up the issue of epidural injection. And we're going to talk in a second about how it works and what it does and what it actually is. And Summer Dawn points out that it's, uh, it, wears off, it works, but it wears off. And uh, boy, is she ever right about that. We'll talk about the studies on that and uh, how they affect you. But before we get into epidural injection for herniated disc and all the rest, I just want to talk about the herniated disc matrix. This is in my video, uh, the number one neurosurgeon recommended treatment for a herniated disc. And it's really important. You got to understand your options because there aren't many, uh, but it gets confusing. And the pain is so bad, people, you know, bless their heart, it's just really hard to sort out when you're in pain. So let's go over the matrix. Let's go back to the screen and take a look. So in that video, this is the herniated disc decision matrix. And there's here are the options. You can have surgery called microdiscectomy. You can wait it out or you can get epidural injection. So there's three options, microdiscectomy, wait it out, or get an epidural injection. The way you know which one of these is right for you depends on the pain you're having and whether or not you have nerve damage. So you gotta consider two things, the pain you're having and whether or not you have nerve damage. If your pain is bearable and you do not have nerve damage, you should wait it out. If your pain is bearable, this row, this column, and you, you do not have nerve damage, you should wait it out. If your pain is bearable or unbearable, but you have nerve damage, you should get microdiscectomy surgery. Let me explain that. And a uh, question probably each of you is having is, how do I know if I have nerve damage? Well, you know if you have nerve damage because you've had an MRI that confirmed the, the herniated disc, and then you have on your examination the loss of motor function, sensory function, or reflexes, and your doctor can help demonstrate these things during your physical examination. By the way, if you saw a doctor who didn't do a physical examination, dump them. Dump them. That is not a good doctor. You have to know. So if they didn't examine you, how could they know? They can't. So they're, they're doing it wrong. So uh, bad doctor. Bad, uh, hit the reset. Get, some, get somebody good. Go find somebody good. So uh, nerve damage... We talk about functional weakness, functional numbness. And what I mean by that is if this level of numbness or weakness were to be permanent, if you couldn't function normally, then that's functional nerve damage. So for example, uh, if you had an L4-5 disc, that causes a foot drop, so you can't lift your foot up. Well, you know when you lift your foot up? When you walk. So let's say as you walk, you have your foot slaps down, it's dropped. It's some, that used to be called steppage gait steppage gait is happening, that's a foot drop. Is that normal? No, I don't wanna live the rest of my life with my foot flopping around like a duck. So that's functional weakness or numbness. 
Um, the other thing is uh, it's so numb that, I mean, I can't, I can barely walk because I can't feel where my foot is. I can't feel my, my skin. I, you know, it's distracting. And I can, in the sock, I can barely, I can barely put on a shoe. That's functional, not functional nerve damage numbness. So let's go back to our thing. So we've got uh, whether the pain is bearable or unbearable. If you have nerve damage, you want to have microdiscectomy surgery. The quicker that herniated component of the disc is removed, the faster you get better. Now, if you have unbearable pain and you do not have nerve damage, then you get epidural injection. Epidural injection is for people with uh, unbearable pain, but who don't have nerve damage. It's so it's a means of pain control. And this is where I wanna to get to what Summer Dawn is pointing out is the reason, it, the reason you don't have it unless you have unbearable pain is the injections are temporary. The injections, by the way, are a steroid and 90 plus percent of the pain management doctors who do these injections do them with a steroid called Depomedrol. And Depomedrol is a drug, it's a steroid, it's a chemical with a half-life of 100 hours. How long does Depomedrol last? 100 hours. Now, that's the half-life. So in half the people, it's a little more. In the other half of the people, it's a little less. But it lasts 100 hours, 24 hours in a day. So that's about four days, right? Depomedrol lasts about four days, maybe a little bit more on average or a little bit less. So that's, that's what you get. Now, someone will say, oh, no, 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 Dan, you're wrong. I had an epidural injection three years ago, and my pain never came back. Correct. By the way, thank goodness, right? I'm glad that happened. But what happened there was... The Depomedrol reduced the inflammation and your body had already healed the disc enough that when the Depomedrol wore off four days later, your pain did not come back. So the epidural didn't last four years. The effect, your body healed itself and you got a long enough window of pain control that your pain didn't come back. And the reverse, I'm sad to say, is also true. Sometimes people have an epidural injection. The epidural's in there working uh, for the 100 hours, but the inflammation is just so much that the pain never went away. So was the drug working for the 100 hours? Yes, but the pain never went away, or the pain, la the pain relief lasted forever. It's the same drug, right? It's the same drug. It just has to do with your underlying situation. And so sometimes when a disc is bigger, herniated component of the disc is bigger, or if there's more inflammation evident on the MRI, it's just less likely that an epidural is gonna be successful. Yeah, so remember, the question is, um, uh, epidural injection works, but it only works short term. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show you right now, what is an epidural injection? You know, what, what is it actually? And let's, let's take a look. Here's, a, uh, here's a, um, an animation, and it's showing you a spine. This is a lumbar spine. Here's a needle, and it's attached to a syringe. And the steroid solution here is purple. Here's a disc. So this is the hard outer part, tough outer part of the disc, the soft inner part. Here's the spinal canal with all the nerve roots. This is that spinous process. For people who watch this show, you know what I'm talking about. Spinous process, the little bumps that you feel in somebody's back, right? Spinous process. That's this guy. So if you put a needle between the, don't do this at home, but if a pain management doctor who's fellowship trained in anesthesia or physiatry and subspecialty certified in pain management puts a needle between those spinous processes, they go right into the space around the dura, the lining of the spinal canal, and that's the epidural space, and then they can inject this solution. So let's watch the whole thing. That's an epidural injection. All right, well, so that's an epidural injection, but uh, one thing you gotta know, there's actually two types of epidural injections. There's chocolate and vanilla. There's two types of, there's, there's others, but there's two types of epidural injections in the spine. One is called interlaminar, and that's the one I just showed you in that video. Interlaminar epidural injection. The other one is called uh, transforaminal, and that one is around to the side of the interlaminar, out where the, the nerve root comes outside of the spine. That's a transforaminal, and almost all the epidural injections people have 
for herniated discs are transferaminal these days. Why? Well, did you see how close that tip of that sharp tip of that needle was to that epi, to that dura? If they go just a millimeter too far, they can poke a hole and cause a leak, a spinal fluid leak, which can cause a postural headache, a headache when you stand up. So nobody wants that. So the, a way to prevent that is by going to the outside and injecting in. Can be done very easily with X-ray guidance. Uh, very helpful. Very cool. But remember, Summer, you are absolutely right. It lasts 100 hours. And when it wears off, um, you're right back where you started. That's why they often do a series of three epidural injections. It's to give you that 100 hours of relief, basically five days. And then the next week, get it builds back up again, gets to where you can't stand it. They do it again. Next week, but by, str by stringing you out that three to five to six weeks, they really hope to get you through the period of healing where it's no longer an issue. I think the takeaways from this segment are the really important things are, don't forget the herniated disc matrix. When you have that bad pain in your back, it's natural to panic. Stop it, get a hold of yourself, look at the matrix, understand your options, and then act on the option that's right for you. Execute the right option. It's not brain surgery. It's not rocket science. You can do it. If you have neurological uh, weakness, if you have functionally limiting numbness or weakness, you need microdiscectomy surgery. If you don't and your pain is bearable, wait it out. You're going to get better. If your pain is unbearable, but you don't have that functional weakness or numbness, then get that epidural injection. Go see a pain management doctor. That's it, people. There's no other... There's no other choices. There's no magic. There's no acupuncture is very helpful. It's about the equivalent of an anti-inflammatory drug for at the best. So you could take an Aleve or you could get acupuncture. That's not a treatment for the, if you've had this kind of pain, you know that's, that's a joke. Chiropractic care is very helpful for joint issues. It's very helpful for posture and station. These are great primary care doctors of the nervous system. They really can't help you with a herniated disc. Other than they do help you from a palliative point of view. They can do moist, uh, moist heat, try to help you with the back pain, the secondary muscle spasm. They can help get you through it, but they can't change the course of it. If you're too hot for a chiropractor, the, the pain is too much for a chiropractic, then you really need to look at uh, pain management under the conditions of the matrix. All right, um, I hope I don't sound preachy. You know, um, what I really would like to give everyone with a herniated disc first is my love. It, it's just so painful. I, I've seen literally thousands of people suffering with this. It breaks my heart it, that you have to go through it. You don't deserve it. It's just a weird thing that happened to you. So first, I give you my best wishes. I give you all my love, and I, I'm sorry that you're having to deal with it but you need to suck it up and do something, right? The, the problem often that I see is that it's not pain that you can not act. You need to know your plan. First of all, you need to know what's wrong because you saw that on your MRI. But second of all, you need to know your plan because this pain is so severe. If you just sit or ditz around, oh, I'm in so much pain, I can't do anything. I can't even go to the MRI scanner. I hurt so bad, that, that's true, but it doesn't matter. You got to suck it up and deal with it. You got to understand the problem, look at your matrix and know what's the right plan for you and then execute that plan. 